Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Man, I am, I, I have to say, I am blessed, okay, to have the studio here that I haven't been able to be here with. I, I really, I, I, I don't appreciate it till I come back and have a seat here, having all my tools and all my bells and whistles and things, and I miss being here, but, you know, I'm trying to do something for a greater cause. We're going to get the red brick house done, and we'll have a studio there because we've got work, you know. <laughs> you got to have a day job, and once we get that place together, we're going to have a nice setup so that way we're able to keep up with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys because we're only about a month away. Actually, probably less than a month away from training camp opening. And here's the great thing of when I get back from working on the Red Brick House. It's like the clock jumps because I'm looking right here. 74 days, 10 hours, 46 minutes and 50 seconds away from kickoff of the season. Can you believe it? It is coming that quickly. I, I can't wait. And of course, what is always like, you really know it's summer when you have the second CSA show that we have today. Um, once you're there, you know, a couple weeks from now, it's going to be training camp. I remember the first one that I went to, I think it was 2012. And um, that's when I met Tyron Smith. I knew because um, th this was actually a really interesting thing because Tyron Smith was actually scared of Joe Boo. Okay, true story. Didn't like the voodoo doll. But what's crazy is, is Tyron Smith was going to be the United Way spokesperson. He was going to be on a billboard, uh, just like each NFL team and market had a player that was going to be on the billboard. I knew that this was going to that Tyron Smith was going to be the one for the uh, Cowboys. And I saw him at the autograph signing show, got his autograph and everything else, and talked to him for a few moments. And I said, I'll see you at training camp. And he looked at me like, okay. And here it was, three weeks later, we're out on the practice field at the end of practice. And I'm there with Joe Boo. And I said, I told you I was going to see you. And he was just like, the fuck? <laughs> and, uh, it was great. He ended up being on the billboard and everything else. And here we are, 11 years later, he's still on the roster. And hopefully the big fella can stay healthy. Now, I've got a bit bone to pick here this morning. And I'm getting ready to go to the CSA show. So we're going to be kind of short today. I've got a bone to pick with Philly 500. See, I told you that, um, you know, Philly is, is he's triggered. I think the Eagle fans are actually scared. They're worried that, that last year that they had everything go right for them. They literally picked up free agents and that every single one of them was a hit. You know what I'm saying? Ask my man Rashid over here about signing free agents. R Rashid, how often do free agents end up being everything that's advertised? But every one that the Eagles got, I mean, they must have had a horseshoe up their ass. Because they literally, everything they did turned to gold. They had the Midas touch last year. Jalen Hurts went from a guy who, you know, looked like he wasn't a franchise quarterback going against Tom Brady in the playoffs to they tried to sign Russell Wilson to all of a sudden being that dude. They stayed healthy. And even with all that, they went to the Super Bowl and lost. And we know what happens after losing a Super Bowl. Usually, you don't go back the next year. In fact, you start beginning this slow ride to rebuilding. Well, unless you're Buffalo, but okay. But they're worried. They're worried. And that's why they're whistling through the graveyard. And they're triggered by anything and everything. So Philly 500, who on a daily basis, Texas me with a video headline that says the Cowboys are scared. Boom. And sends me this. And, it, and it's always got pictures of it got me in the title. It's got me and Michael Anthony fitness reaction gig economy. 
electrician and all that, you know, he's got got him dancing, you know, where he's working out, you know, and everything else and saying, I'm sander of wood and cooker of food and he's coming from my meats. He's always calling on me. He's always calling on me. Hey, Mike, David Wiley's upstairs. He ended up sending this video that said, Dak Prescott is guaranteed a Super Bowl. Can you believe it? What's wrong with these? The Cowboys, they lost their mind. They lost their mind. Ah, they're crazy. Okay. Um, and I said, we only saw a 15-second clip here. 15 seconds. I said, I want to see the total thing. So shout out to Total Access, who actually were talking about this whole situation. And let me play it, because you'll hear it in its entirety. And I told you, see, Philly, you got to stop lying on me, bro. Because first of all, you said, I said, Colin Cowherd said. And it wasn't Colin Cowherd I was talking about, the kiss of death. It was Mike Greenberg. Mike Greenberg always, always screws up. Um, that's David. Um, hang on. Yeah. David, I'm doing my morning video. Come around the back, bro. All right. See, look. I, 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 I'll unlock it when he gets down here. Okay. All right. I'm trying to do my morning video here. I got the dog barking. I got David Wiley. I got this giant fan with a damn New York blanket on. Finally. Okay. And, and we're trying to get ready to go here. But let me go to Total Access here. Boom. Listen to this. I'm Mike. Diggs does it better than I do. It is a brand new edition of NFL Total Access. Mike Cam with you, my guy Brian Baldinger. Baldy is going to be with us, plus Ian Rappaport. Can't forget about my guy Cam Wolf, who'll get us the latest from his notebook on the Dolphins. But we start with a bold proclamation from Dak Prescott. Team goal is to win a Super Bowl or not, and it's truly a bust if we don't. And not that that's okay, but that's what our standards have to be for us to be able to to thrive and to get better in, in this atmosphere and in the in uh, in, the, in this world and being under the Dallas Cowboys umbrella. I guess you could say is that you have to accept that. You have to accept those challenges. Mm -hmm. I've always said with great expectations come greater results. So bring them on, and we're going to try to answer that. Brian Baldinger with us right now. Okay, so we took that out of context. I'm sorry, we're live here recording. Good look. I get no respect, even my own house. No, I, no freaking respect in my own house. Man, coming in, hey, how you doing? It's like, dude, you literally just walked in front of the camera while I'm recording my morning video. I got a New York stinking giant fan wearing a damn New York giant blanket. I think we got to start the eviction process. I, I think we got to evict Rashid from here. I, I, yeah, it is 30 days. So by the time training camp's here, okay, and I think I, I, hopefully I can get one of those rocket dockets in Texas where, you know, they definitely will say, yeah, uh-huh, he's a giant fan in your Cowboys basement. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to speed it up. But anyway, what if you watch what was said, he said expectations are to win the Super Bowl, and if it doesn't happen, then it's not a success. Lord knows that is the expectation not just by the Cowboy players, that's the expectation by everybody else. It doesn't matter that the Dallas Cowboys deconstructed their team last year. It doesn't matter that they let go of their number one receiver, and Amari Cooper, one of the best route runners. It doesn't matter that they let go of their third best receiver in Cedric Wilson. It didn't matter that they let go of Lyle Collins and Connor um, Williams. It didn't matter that they said El Paso to Randy Gregory. <clears throat> it didn't matter. <clears throat> didn't matter. The Cowboys, of course, they were a failure because they didn't win the Super Bowl after everybody said they, they didn't have a chance to. So let's go on a little bit. I'm just saying, Philly, get your facts straight. Don't be lying and bullshitting on me. So, Baldy, you hear what Dak Prescott had to say. Yesterday on the show, I had asked David Carr if the Cowboys' defense was good enough to keep, up, keep Philly in check. But I, I ask you, how about this team's offense? Is it better than the Eagles? Is it better than the Niners? It isn't. And I can appreciate it Dak's optimism. He's got nothing to lose by saying that, to be honest with you. But they have been stopped in the playoffs two years in a row by the 49ers. 
They Not the Eagles, the mind you. The 49ers. Points. They couldn't score a touchdown against the number one defense in football. Uh, when well, they had one weapon. One season. weapon. And so the offense has to be better. It has to be more productive. And Dak knows that. You know what? And so now you look at the offense and you go. Okay. You know what? I'm sick of this shit. I am so sick of the bullshit because, see, they only give you part of the, 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 the equation here. Let's be clear here. You play the number one defense in the playoffs. Okay, things are different in the playoffs. Once you lost Tony Pollard, you did not have credible weapons other than C.D. Lamb. Let's be clear here. You need to put an asterisk right there. It wasn't like he had, you know, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Miles Sanders going against that team. He had C.D. Lamb, and since they only had C.D. Lamb, they could double cover him. You or you think that Noah Brown is going to win you against the 49ers? You think that that's going to be good enough? You think that an aging Zeke Elliott is enough? You know, this whole thing of, oh, well, Dak, you know, he, he, he couldn't do he could not. No, he couldn't elevate Noah Brown and a gimpy Michael Gallup over the best defense in football. That's asking too much of anybody. I don't care if it had been Peyton Manning. I don't care if it had been Tom Brady. I don't care if it had been Pat Mahomes. You had to have at least credible threats. Oh, mind you, an offensive line that was basically made shift. When you got a damn Jason Peters who's 40 years old, okay? 40 years old having to play. You got Tyron Smith who had literally a hamstring ripped off the bone playing right tackle, a position he hadn't played since freaking his rookie year. Come on, man. It wasn't just Dak. He didn't have a great game, but God damn, it wasn't just Dak. And I get tired of the same bullshit when you had a credible team the week before. What did Dak do? Four TDs? A Russian TD on top of it? Beating their nemesis for the first time? Come on, man. Okay, Brandon Cooks Getting me mad before the be CSA show. He's a solid number two to C.D. Lamb, no question. But they do lose Dalton Schultz. They do lose Ezekiel Elliott. It will help if they keep their two starting tackles healthy and, and start throughout the season. That would make the offense have the chance of being a lot better. But I believe the offense has got to improve. Now, maybe Mike McCarthy calling plays will help. Maybe there'll be a better rhythm. Maybe they will find a way to run the ball better. Um, I kind of think that they're a little bit short on that side of the ball, but I do okay. believe. Okay, okay, good. I love the hate. I love it. I love it when they doubt us. To Mike McCarthy, Dak, in this offense, to pick it up, especially in the post Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Uh, Baldy, you know, you make reference to it, and obviously this team needing to get better. Cowboys, I'm looking there at the bottom of the screen. It's kind of crazy to me. Haven't advanced to an NFC Championship game since 1995. So I know we're talking about Super Bowl or bust, but boy, it has been a long drought. Oh, my down God. In Texas. Meanwhile, the sixth annual quarter. Dallas Cowboys haven't been to an NFC Championship game since 1985. Is that, is that all y'all got? Is that all you got? Okay. Because, you, you know, I'm, 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 it's Sunday. Lord, 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 give me strength. I get it. But you can't blame the Dallas Cowboys of today for all the transgressions of the ones that happened in the past. You know, I'm going to go back to this and say, let's go ahead and just look at the Cowboys right now through the Mike McCarthy era. Six and ten. And I'm going to say to you, it was a damn good thing that we went six and ten that year. Y'all, but look, I see Rasheed kind of, okay, it was a good thing. You know why? Had the Dallas Cowboys won one more game and won the division, we wouldn't have Micah Parsons on this team. We wouldn't have been in a position to trade back with the Eagles to get Micah Parsons. And Micah Parsons is a game changer. Mike McCarthy, 6-10. 12 and 5, 12 and 5. A point six 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 win percentage. That's the devil. Let's look at the Cowboys from where we are right now. Three seasons, two playoff berths, one win. And let's add what we do this year with it and say, this is the Dallas Cowboys of right now. I can't say that Mike McCarthy is responsible for the Jason Garrett error. I can't say Mike McCarthy is responsible for Tony Romo and 
all the mismatches of quarterbacks and stuff. You can only deal with the guys that are right here right now. And I will say since the Jason Garrett error, not era, error, that the Cowboys have made changes to what they're doing and how they do business. They've been more of letting the coaches coach and giving them what they need. The fact that they drafted a defensive lineman, they got substance over sizzle. It's always the hot pick, you know, you're the guy that's going to sell jerseys. When you draft a Mozzie Smith, that's a guy that ain't going to sell a lot of jerseys. That's not going to be a guy that's going to get a whole lot of numbers, that's going to be a fantasy guy that everybody's going to talk about. But that's the kind of guy that helps you win if he's going to be what they project him to be. That, my friends, is a change that the Dallas Cowboys are trying to do. They recognize they screwed the pooch last year getting rid of Amari Cooper. And that's why they go out and they get a Brandon Cooks. They recognize we can't just throw anybody out there and expect to win. And that's why you go out and you get a Stephon Gilmore. Aging, but definitely an improvement. And I have to say, as you look at positions like safety, where we were talking about, let's go get uh, Earl Thomas or trade for Jamal Adams, that we probably have the best safety core right now in the NFL. Three guys that can play downhill, that in position flex. I look at our secondary right now. You got to look at that and say it's stout. You got to look at our defensive line as much improved than where they've been. You got to look at this defense and say the Cowboys actually have a defense. It's not something we had much of since the 90s. So they can talk. They can do what they want to do. They can try and trash the Cowboys as much as they want. But I believe in them. And Philly, Philly. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you guys at the CSA show. Peace. Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing.